So I guess, yeah, maybe Kian, we should introduce you too. Um, would you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm Kian. I, I work in Parity and I want to talk about Fragment. And I hope it would be helpful for, for everyone. Yeah. Uh, it does I, relate I, to staking and validation. So I guess it's, uh, yeah, some people might be interested. You, yeah, you, you can do, you can learn a lot more about staking in detail uh, and how it's working. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it because twice on the seminar, we've talked about the session palette and how you can rotate sessions in various ways to, you know, like rotate your authority set. And on both occasions, we've sort of written our own custom palette that does the rotation in a you know fairly straightforward way, like maybe a pseudo call makes this call that says like add some validators or something. Um, but like the thing that's out in the wild on Kusama is staking, and you know that involves fragment, and it's interesting and more complex. And so I'm excited to personally just to get to know you know how it's working, and then also about fragment and your work with offline fragment. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, uh, I can get started. I mean, um, yeah, let's let's do that, I guess. Um, cool. And then, oh, and I'll also say, like, um, the format here is typically, like, pretty casual, and it's encouraged for anyone to come off of mute and interrupt with questions or, or anything yes, like that. So, of course, of course. I mean, yeah, I thought that's usually your style, too. Uh, I should look, like I have a slide deck prepared. I should clarify that, that, that this does not mean by any chance that I want to like give a presentation. I want to present this in the future, and I'm using this as an experiment to see how, how the slide deck works. So, yes, so uh, definitely interrupt me at any point if you want and ask questions. But um, yeah, it's going to look like a slide kind of thingy. Yeah, so Fragment. I, there are three main uh, components to, to Fragment generally that I want to want to speak of. Uh, first is sequential fragment, which is the name that we use for the election algorithm that we run on chain at the moment. Um, and we will be running it off chain in the very near near future, but yeah, we will get to it. Next is uh, a little tool called offline fragment, which, um, which, which just runs everything off the chain and can predict the next uh, the next validators for the next era for you. And um, then finally off chain fragment, which is a variant of the first one, which is going to run off chain. And it's the, the, the third one is the biggest chunk. And I'm very much regretting the, the naming of the, the middle thing called offline fragment because people are confusing them like or they're using them completely interchangeably in the community within parity everyone it's it's not yeah it's, yeah it's i'm guilty of that too you, you can every, everyone is I, I i am i'm suspicious as i'm looking at everyone and i'm correcting people like ah no that was wrong <laughs> like, yeah. sequential fragment so it started like exactly here's a page of history you can see started almost a year ago february 2019 um it was actually right about the time i had joined parity and it was like the one of the first things i worked on and before Fragment, our staking was, well, at the time it was almost like a, I mean, at the time we only had Alexander Testnet. It wasn't, there was no need for any sophisticated uh, election at all. It was, it was way simpler. But if I recall correctly, we only did something like coin voting. voting. So everyone was like, all, all the votes from anyone who nominated was given to the validators and um, yeah, it was fairly simple. I don't remember the de details, but it's irrelevant. But sometime around a year ago, we decided to implement uh, Fragment into the staking. Um, and so I, uh, there has been a recent article from Web3, which describes uh, how Fragment is working in detail. They also have like a few pages, which goes into the math in yeah, in, in detail, but I don't want to do either of them. You can you can refer to them. I would show the links. What I would do here is say very casually or informally what fragment gives us as output. What is the what is the format of the input and output? We have a number of nominators and one and two and five, and they each have a number of tokens at stake. This is exactly what I think many of you done already in Kusama. You you nominate and you just say I bonded ten x number of tokens and what you do is you vote for a number of validators you only define i want to vote for this guy and that guy and i have 10 tokens you don't really say what happens next and this is exactly what fragment gives us if for example nominator 2 is now voting for v2 and v3 
and it has 20 tokens, it's not defined how this 20 is going to be distributed if both V2 and V3 win. What if one of them wins? One if both of, what, what if both of them win? So the output of fragment or the, the consequence is first uh, a list of winners saying who was the winner for the next round, who should be elected, uh, which I now highlighted with red dots. So it first tells us this validator and that validator and that validator were the winners. These guys, um, uh, yeah, they, they should be elected. And then it also gives us some weights. It precisely tells us how much of each nominator's stake should be distributed among, uh, among the validators. So you end up with a graph like this. And this number, these numbers that you have here is exactly from a real fragment output that I have run in a test. And the numbers are as you see. Yeah, and there's a final st stage as well, which is like a post-processing. Now, when we have these weights, uh, we can also compute the total stake of each, uh, each validator. In this case, for example, this V2 guy, 36% of, of 15 plus 68% of 20. So it's this number. And this is the number that you see in Polkadot.js apps for, for each validator. And like, I don't know, I was going to say something which is very detailed, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, and this is like a final stage where we can compute the total backing stake of each validator uh, who has been elected with Fragment. Uh, this is what you see in Polkadot.js apps, and it's also the number which is in your exposure struct, which is quite important in staking. You might have seen it at some point. So, Kian, yeah, it's an and the, the number, like, if we look at validator two, that 19, that's yeah. in the exposure struct associated with V2, with, like, that person? So that's, um, uh, the 19 would be exposure.total. I can show it, uh, but that's a bit complicated to do with Zoom. I have to change my sharing to go to. So in the exposure oh. struct, there are numerous fields. One of them is total backing stake or it's called dot total. And this 19 would be that, would be the total thingy. Okay. Which, cool. And then and this there, example, is it, it's the case that like these validators are not, we're not considering like self stake, I guess, or self. Uh, uh, yeah. in, the, in this example, I'm not, but in the staking automatically, any validator is also a nominator. That's a good point actually. Okay, cool. And th like, this is kind of a, dumb question, I guess, but I don't know the answer to it. So like, if I'm a validator, let's just say I'm V2, you know, I'm hoping to get a bunch of people to nominate me and get all this stake and everything. Like, can I also nominate or like cast approval votes for other validators or just myself? No, you like staking this, like, so there are two aspects to this question. Fragment doesn't care about this. If you look at the fragment code, you just give it a bunch of validators. Like it's not even called like that. It's called voters and targets, and it just matches them together. It doesn't even check if there's a duplicate. Uh, but staking should technically disallow any validator to also nominate. Like these roles are mutually exclusive. If that's the correct word for it. Um, yeah. Uh, so if you can nominate while you're also validator, then you have found a bug. And we should report it and yeah so oh, it's yeah. not a i have uh, not found it i was just curious okay if you happen to do it then you have found a way to yeah go around the system i should either report it or exploit it right yeah yeah um, so that's a question in the chat too maybe before you move on yeah i saw a pop-up please interrupt me yeah. so what's the question where are the weights defined who defines them and when yeah, that's that's what i want to get to so okay. how they are defined if you're really keen there's a, a like i think a 20 page per paper and the gist of it in web tree uh, but i have an example here about that and that was exactly my my point who's like if if you're a nominator too like you're like what what the hell why why is my weight distributed like this and what i want to bring about like how i want to go against this is show you how i would solve the same problem if i was i was the person who would who would be solving this problem if i was the staking modules election so i would look at the same graph and be like okay validator 1 is 
you know, it doesn't have anything not important. These, and we want to choose three out of four. So these three would be elected. And what I would do is probably, so I would elect these three and I would do this. Simpler, right? And the idea is like N2 voted for two people, so split her stake in half, and like N4 yeah. only voted for one person. Yeah, well, why not? Or what else? Like, this is what I would like. This is probably the, the most, the simplest thing that would come to mind. You choose the winners based on some criteria, number of votes, sum of vote, vote stakes, and then you distribute it. That's, uh, that's fair, I would say. And then you get like, but what, what happens is that you get different numbers here for, their, for the sum of these, uh, of these uh, validator stake. And this brings us to the question of what is a good fragment, um, what is a good fragment output? And we call it like the MPOS problem, nominated proof of stake. And it's, it's an optimization problem. I mean, I, I'm, it's been years since I've been to school and I have dealt with this pure math stuff, but basically you want to optimize a function and you never know. Oh, okay. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, wait, that forget about the optimization stuff. The point is there are numerous ways to solve this impulse problem. And there is no way to say like what's good and what's bad, unless if you define it. And the question is what, yeah, fragment is main, merely one of the many solvers that can give us um, these weights. And the problem is MP hard. I would get to that. But the main question is, in our point of view, as let's say, as uh, well, I mean, this is slightly opinionate, opinionated, you can change it if you have a specific chain, but let's say we want to build a good chain where the stake is evenly distributed or it's fair. What, is, what makes a good MPOS solution? So yeah, it's, it could be use case depend, dependent or opinionated, uh, but currently we have three criteria. Maximize the minimum elected validator stake. So if you choose 10 validators, one of them has the minimum stake. One of them is the most fragile, the most vulnerable. And you should do your best to make sure that one, one, one weakest one is maximized like uh, your minimum is high and this is the most important criteria that we have and the reason of it is that if the stake of even the weakest one is relatively high there is less in incentive to do bad stuff if you choose 10 validators and one of them has like i don't know the equivalent of ten dollars at stake and they can exploit the system in a way and earn $100, they'll be like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. That's, that's fair. I mean, um, it makes sense. But if, if everyone has a lot at stake, even if the minimum staked validator has a lot at stake, then the incentive is less because even the, the, the or let me summarize it or say it for the last time like this, the minimum staked validator among the elected ones we assume is the one which is the most probable to do bad stuff. Let's, let's put it like that because they have the least amount of money at stake and we try to maximize that. So the, the idea is like you can, you know, if you do something bad, like equivocate or break the protocol yeah. in some way, you're going to get slashed. And if you only have a little bit at stake, like you can only get slashed so much, right? And the, the, yeah, more exactly. you take, the worse you can get slashed. Exactly. Because, okay. yeah, you only can get amount, get staked based on your exposure to total, exactly that number that we, that we talked about. So the other two parameters are less important, um, but still there are secondary and third measures of, of, um, of evaluating frag of NPOS solutions in general. We want to maximize the sum of all stakes, so amount, the aggregate amount of tokens at stake. We also want to maximize this. Uh, this, I, I don't know exactly. I think it relates to inflation. We want to keep like a portion of the all tokens always at stake and this helps with that. Uh, and the third one is minimize the variance. So the system, we, we, we want it to be relatively fair. The, the stake of the richest validator and uh, that weak guy, the gap shouldn't be that high. I think this one also makes sense intuitively. Like you, you don't want it to be uh, too, too, 
too much of a gap between them. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a second if anyone has ideas or yeah, thoughts about this. Um, yeah, else we go forward. So yeah, now let's compare my solution and Fragment's solution. So my solution gave for the, all the three parameters I named, 17 and a half was the minimum, this was the sum, this was the variance. I mean, the square of this is the variance, but the, the sum squared is an indication of the variance. I think we have a question. Do we? Yeah, Shevdor is saying, where does the target uh, maximize revenue show? <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> what is maximize revenue? I think it's one of the indicators that Yako added to apps, right? Yeah, what, what I'm saying in short is, um, based on the rules you mentioned, basically you're saying as a nominator, I'm going to try to spread my stake as evenly as possible among the people, try to help the small guys to become bigger. Yeah. Um, uh, but you, as a nominator, you don't do this. The system does this on your behalf, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's assume I could do it manually, which was the, the uh, before fragment that was the case. Actually, people could nominate manual, manually who they wanted. There was only one validator, mm -hmm. and um, and now fragment is kind of doing that. Um, so my question here is, um, it, it doesn't sound like there is any incentive for me using fragment as far as the rules you mentioned. Like, what if I really want to break one of these rules? I, I don't care about spreading my funds evenly, for example. It doesn't re bring me much. So, I mean, at the moment, you there's no way to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. After the pull request that we're going to talk about at the second half of this session toward the end, anyone can submit a solution to the MPOS yeah. problem. Anyone can propose their own solution. But still, the criteria is the same. Like we evaluate your solution based on the same three criteria, And I think questioning that would be like, I don't know, it's like a very fundamental thing that you're questioning. And it's for the benefit, it's for the security of the chain or the system as a whole that we have these three parameters. Um, yeah. So, so, so may maybe I should have brought the question maybe this way is where do these three parameters come from? Like, why are there only three? Why not four? And, you know, like, where, do, where is it coming from? Okay. So it, it originally comes from Web3 research team. And I, I mean, I actually wasn't involved in much. Like, I don't remember exactly. But it's something that our research team has eventually come up with as indicators of a healthy staking system. Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah. Like I think, you know, yeah. How specifically they choose these three, I also don't know, but I think like their macroscopic goal was like, we want to choose whatever criteria will give us the emergent property that our system is like, you know, abuse resistant that the validators can't take advantage or like, you know, do this <laughs> thing that yeah. like maybe you're saying like, um, maximize their personal gain as opposed to like in some abstract sense, the well being of the system as a whole. Yeah, I think the nominator have incentive that the network runs, don't get me wrong. Um, I think, you know, everyone wants the thing to keep running and no one wants to have a bad validator. Yeah. Nonetheless, uh, when people make choices, they may want, a bit like when you do investment, you know, you may pick a super wild horse and kind of bet a bit on it to try to, to boost up your revenue, even though you know you make a risk on this one. And it sounds like um, Fragment at the moment is really trying to smoothen everything for us. So it kind of makes decisions that are that sound very strong, actually. Yeah, that's kind of true. Like uh, mm -hmm. true in the sense that um, so you can always choose that why you describe it as a wild horse. I think that you want to bet on, or you can always choose that risky stuff that you want. But how much of your stake goes to that risky thing is up to the chain. And yeah, I mean we, yeah. I mean, we do more. We do other stuff as well later on, which actually I think you're gonna dislike even more from this perspective. <laughs> but okay. yeah, because we we tweak the weights even more to make it like smaller and stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing is, these three indicators. Like at the end of the day, validators are the ones which are going to determine the health of the chain. They're the ones who are going to be authoring, etc. And all of those parameters also the, the relate to validators. So we only care about that side of the graph, you know, I, I from on that graph that I had a few slides mm -hmm. before, we only care about those numbers at the right side. That's kind of uh, how it is now, at least. Um, 
And but the reason is only the well-being of the chain. Like I see. Yeah. I mean, so I guess you could always target. you could always like just um, uh, split your stake into multiple uh, yeah. accounts, right? And just singly like nominate if you want to. Yes. Kind exactly. of right. Control the, but it's kind of a pain basically to do that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, just kind of, you know, on the on the same questions. I mean, you know, from my perspective, I mean, we're running a validator also, right? So it's kind of this is I think this set of rules optimizes for kind of the kind of the well being of the of the system, but it probably is provides less incentive for you know people to run validators, right? So I think of like Bitcoin where it's kind of like people the miners are just trying to like make money, but the side effect is the security of the of the chain. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. in this case it seems to optimize a bit more for, you know, kind of this universal good of of Yeah, exactly. It it seems a bit more conservative as in we're gonna keep everything as fair and equal as possible and yeah, I mean, but it's, I mean, it's all experiment, I would say, in some sense. It, it might all be subject to change in in very I, near future. Who knows? I feel like, I feel like it's a trade-off, because if, if you provide kind of more economic incentive to the validators, then you get more people interested, so then you kind of get a gain in security. Yeah, but then in sense, you, but, if, but it's a trade-off, right? Like, you know. Kind yeah, of. I mean, if, if, if the incentive for for making money out of it is very good, but then the security is flawed, then it's very profitable until some points, until then security becomes risky and then everyone spreads. I think that's what happened. If you keep yeah. the system a little bit, in my personal opinion, this is completely, and I haven't launched two chains in my past, I don't know, I'm just yeah. talking like completely uh, on my minor experience in blockchain systems that, um, that uh, I think if you take the conservative approach, you're also your, um, your community will grow slower, but in a more stable way. That's, I think, what's, what will happen here as well with Fragment. Yeah, in, in some sense, the name of the game is incentive alignment. So like when we're answering those questions, like of all these different solutions we could have to the NPOS problem, what makes a good one? One, one thing we really want is where like whatever is considered good, correct protocol following validator behavior, we want that to also be the most profitable strategy for the validators to play. So like, you know, if it were more profitable for validators to do something other than follow the protocol, now we've got a real problem because they're definitely going to not follow the protocol. They're going to do that <laughs> other more profitable thing. Well, right? so. well I've seen the, the move where like, you know, one move I've seen is people are now like planning on running like multiple validators, which I'm not sure if that was the intent behind the design, right? But they're saying, well, if it's kind of evenly spread and everyone, you know, kind of the pie is evenly divided, let me try to get more slices yeah. of the pie, right, kind of thing, right? So I don't know yeah. if that was, you know, if that's... Totally agree with you, Derek, on this one. And I think that's kind of the, the first rule of Fragment, you know, to try to boost up the small validators. So I think today the incentive of the network is to say as validator, I'm going to go for the smallest stake uh, that allows me to be in the set. And that's what we see. We see people spreading, um, I don't know, 10, 20 validators with exactly the same amount of stake or the same amount nominated um, to reach that. And, I, and I'm also thinking like you that it may not be the best option, but I think in a proof of stake system, we may not have a better at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the thing that you had before, the simple kind of like Cosmo style straight delegated thing, we not had, you know, that gives you more profit opportunities at validator, but then I guess you get these concentrations of stake behind certain validators. So that there's downside there too. So mm, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's kind of not clear kind of sometimes what the best, you know, what the best solution is. Okay, yeah, that's that's an interesting point. And I didn't know about the splitting, but I haven't also followed much about the validator community in the last month uh, because of this work. Yeah, I mean, it's it's we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, should I continue or? Yeah, I guess I guess we're done. Okay, so we were we were comparing my solution and Fragment, and these are the numbers that my solution obtains from our three parameters. The, the least, the weakest guy is 17 and a half and various variance is 2000 something. While uh, Fragment gives us 19 for the, for the min, min nominator, same sum, but, and a lower variance. Like the top one is 31 in Fragment, but here is 35. So you can see the gap is even bigger. So again, I, I, I don't, and I can't explain right now exactly how Fragment is working, but you can see it's working toward the objectives as I explained. It's trying to 
make everything as smooth, as even as possible, as fair as possible, um, least gap between min and, back, min and max, maximizing the minimum, et cetera. And there is a post, and, and, and OK, so the thing is now these, these parameters, now I can talk, describe them in the terms of an optimization problem. Uh, you can always come up with different age weights, and all of them give you gives you like a different min stake. And let's imagine this is our only parameter right now. Minimizing this, it's called an optimization problem, and there is no clear like you, you, there is no clear answer to it. You always have to move toward your target, and um, yeah, it, it's among like a very the hardest. Uh, math problems that you can have and um, yeah this is why you might also hear yeah fragments expensive or heavy to compute etc because we run this sequential fragment and then there is a second phase which we at the moment don't ru don't run anymore which improves it even better but that's a iterative process meaning that it can you can tell it run thousand iterations and it keeps improving it until maybe at some point it gets stuck um, but that also usually doesn't happen. But I mean, that's, that's too much detail. But any, the point is, uh, what we're doing now is like we do one very simple fragment step, and then you can go infinitely number of iterations to even further improve these parameters, to even make them better. And in the Kusama, we used to run two steps of that post-processing as well. At some point, it got really, really bad. We removed it. There was a so it was slow, and there was also, I think, more issues with it. But yeah, we, we don't run it anymore. But yeah, hopefully in the future. So a little, did someone have a question? I was just curious if, like, I remember that the, it, for a while on Kusama that there was kind of like a pausing happening at the end of the yeah. era. And yeah. was that because of this, basically? Because it was trying to run this, and it was expensive, basically? Yeah, partially. I, I mean, I'm proud to say not all of it, but partially it was because of <laughs> Yeah, so of, that's why it had to be kind of removed or kind of optimized, yes. I guess, further. I got it. Yes. Um, but I think even now, still sometimes block times spike around end of an era. I haven't checked, but it could be that it still happens. And I mean, as we as we increase the number of validators, it will keep happening again. Um, I also had something in the chat. Let's see if anyone. Uh... Yeah, I did ask a question. Actually, I asked in the chat so you can pick up if you want to answer now. But I think it's related to the comment of Derek. Okay. My question is, when is does fragment runs? Because it's taking, it's kind of freezing the state, you know, saying these are the validators, these are the nominators, and we're going to compute for that, and it's going to take some time uh, so, to do that. So when is this input uh, taken? At the moment, it runs at the end of the era. It runs sort of, you don't have to freeze anything because it runs sort of atomically within the block, and mm -hmm. it must happen within the block time of one block, which which is the whole reason that it's a problem, because it's uh, bound, okay. it's doomed to become impossible. Like with Kusama is now fairly with with Polkadot with like thousand nom validators and hundreds of thousands of nominators. That graph is going to be really big. yeah yeah okay um, I see yeah. okay so one sort of side note is that at some points to I think around Web3 Summit last year in August or sometime around that. Very spontaneously, we also decided to use Fragment for our council election, which is what we're doing also now. Before that, the council election, I mean, the module is still in Substrate Repo, but I think it was never deployed anywhere. It's very, very, uh, it's even more expensive to compute than Fragment. It's very complicated. At some point, we just uh, yeah moved council also to Fragment. And um, um, OK, I think I skipped the slide again. Oh, no, no. Uh, so, and what we do is um, we ask Fragment to give us 20 members. And one property of Fragment that I overlooked maybe on the previous slides is that is it gives us members in their in an order of desirability. Like if you run it with if you run it and ask it to give you five members, it gives you a set of five. If you ask it to give me seven members, it gives you the same five and then two extra ones. So it's giving you it's iteratively giving you new winners every round. So we can sort of partition them into two sets, 13 members, 17 runner-ups, as we have at the moment. And uh, yeah, and then we split them. The only difference is there is no self-vote. And I remember when we first deployed the council, there was a bit of problem 
and because uh, many people can submit their candidacy and then they get removed and sla not slashed but their bond was taken at the end because they lost because they had no votes because they forgot to self vote for themselves um but yeah okay but council has been running okay i think recently we're not going to do much about it it's going to be a fairly small election and yeah just note that it's running the same fragment code and yeah uh, with the only difference that same there is no software. Or just like a, a similar algorithm implemented. It's twice. the same. No, no, it's the same, same crates. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, offline fragment, which again, I'm going to rename it every, any day now. Uh, it's, a, it's a mini debug tool that I started. Let me expand all of these and then I can talk about all of them. Uh, is there more? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a debug tool that I started working on a while ago, but I think uh, some people, some other people also started using it. Um, it still exists. I don't, I don't maintain it uh, that much continuously, but every now and then I try to keep it up to date. What it does is that is it reads the staking state out of the chain, it runs the fragment and it gives you the output. So at the beginning, it was fairly simple. Now I've added more, a few more features to it that you can play around with. You can give it a particular block number so it reads the state from that block number. You can recreate the fragment outputs from the previous states. If you play a bit with the code, you can, yeah, you can do some other interesting things with it. You can remove self votes. You can add a new fake staker in between if you want to, or, you know, if you, for example, you want to, I mean, I haven't added this feature, but I think it would be, for example, nice if I can add it sometime. Uh, you want to validate, but you haven't even bonded yet. You want to know what's going to happen to you. And you could pretty much easily do this now with this offline fragment, but currently it's not supported by, uh, through the CLI, you should change, like you should go through the code, but I'm hoping to get these ready and eventually turn it into like a, I don't know, like I call it like a staking lab sort of tool that you can play play around with staking with it. Um, yeah, just be be aware of it. I mean, if if you're interested in how Fragment is working or uh, that kind of stuff, it's it's good to work with this tool as well. We also have received many many uh, valuable bug reports from this off-chain Fragment uh, because the results were different from the ones on chain. Um, yeah, but. Although that that I should know that that's not always a sign of a bug because um, there used to be some differences between how the chain is processing the the validators and nominators and how this offline fragment thing is doing and it hasn't been updated yet. So, uh, but if you so if you work with it and you find anything unusual, definitely come to me. I, I love, I I appreciate talking about it. And finally, we get to it, the final part of this presentation, that's very soon we're going to allow anyone to submit this NPOST solutions, and I'm planning on adding that to this offline fragment tool as well. So you can use it to generate the next NPOST solution for the next era. So Ke Keon, is this, is yep. the tool, the offline fragment tool, this is something that like never submits a transaction back to the chain. It never like actually casts approval votes or like affects anything. Okay. And this no, is no, no. It's, it just scrapes the chain and runs some stuff locally, nothing. Yeah, right. This is a way for me to like dig into the data that's available by watching the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Okay. And uh, I mean, you can do the same very, I would say much easier with Yako's JavaScript API generally. And this, because this one is in Rust. But the good thing is I haven't worked on running the fragment crate, the Rust code of fragment on WebAssembly yet. It should be possible in principle, but I mean, that takes some time. But this one is at Rust, so it can run the same fragment code as Substrate, you know. So, so how do the, I, like, what are the practical steps of playing with this tool? Is it, does it come with Substrate or like, where do I, where do no, I? You need to, you, it needs to connect to a node, but mm -hmm. recently, uh, Andrew worked on allowing it to connect to remote nodes as well. So you can just connect it to, I don't know, Parity's Kusama node and then it works. Yeah. So, okay. So I like, I get some code, I build it. When I run it, I give it an RPC endpoint or WebSocket endpoint of a node and yeah. then it does its thing. So, yeah. so where does the code live? It's at the moment in my GitHub. 
but I will okay. send you, I would show a link at the end or uh, okay. yeah. I'll dig it. I'll try to dig it up too. I bet I can find it. Maybe we would be good if we put it like sort of next to this video later on. Yeah. Uh, so, and this brings us to finally off chain fragments. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, as one of you guys also mentioned, we had like some weird delays and uh, not bad stuff happening toward the end of the era and Kusama and the, the, suspe the suspects were fragment and reward payouts. Both of them are being uh, refactored right now. Um, yeah, and I did like, at the moment I did some benchmarks on native code and fragment took like half a second to finish uh, calculating the winners on, uh, on the native, on my native machine. And if you, Think of this in terms of WebAssembly, you can imagine that it's going to be pretty small and more than like, I don't know, two, three seconds, which is already like, uh, yeah, like way beyond what it should be. Um, and we also removed the equalize, which, is, which was the post-processing that I mentioned. And things sort of settled, I would say. The dust kind of settled and things were kind of OK again. But as I said, this is doomed to fail. Like running fragment on chain in a block is suicide. and off-chain fragment uh, treats that. Okay, yeah, so we moved off-chain. Uh, this is something that I think you're kind of, at least with the top part of it, you're familiar with. We have this thing called era, long time, one, two days, sessions, few hours, like four, six hours. And here at the end of the era is when um, the election currently happens. So the first step, the first thing that off-chain fragment adds is we have something called an election window. And it's a subset of the last session. So at the moment, implementation is in a way that it cannot be more than the last session. But I mean, we can change it over uh, later on. Uh, but the point is, there is a point in time when we say, now we identify it, and everyone also identifies it. And this is like an on-chain storage item, which sort of flags everyone. And what happens in this at this moment is, first, staking becomes locked, as in you can no longer change your validation and nomination, or you can no longer change anything that affects the output of staking at the end of the era. So during this period of time, you cannot bond, you cannot validate, you cannot nominate. And during this time, we accept solutions for fragment. There is a new call in, in staking module, same as any other transaction. You can submit a transaction and give us a fragment solution. We look at it, we evaluate it. If it's good, we use it. We actually put it on chain and we keep it for the next era. So can that, I, like, if I have a question to see if I understood yeah. right what I was reading. Like, Technically, the solution that I submit there doesn't even have to come from fragment. It can come from like, you know, me thinking hard or inventing my own thing or rolling yeah. dice or, or whatever, but it's yeah. going to be subjected to those same three criteria that you... Exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. It can be anything. You can, you can submit bad stuff. You can submit a solution which is... I mean, you can also take it to the next step and submit a solution which is invalid. Like, say I am a millionaire, even though I, I'm not even a validator, for example. You can also do that, but we detect it and we then... Well, at the moment, we don't slash you, but you pay a very large amount of fee for nothing, basically because we, we detect it. So in this win window, anyone can submit a solution. Moreover, and more important, the reason that it's called off-chain fragment is because all validators, because all validators, as you probably know, all validators run off-chain, uh, have the off-chain flag enabled by default. All validators also start calculating the same sequential fragment code and submit uh, off-chain and submit the solution back as a unsigned transaction. I'm going to pause again for a few seconds. So we allow everyone to submit a solution. Any normal user can sub submit a solution as a signed transaction. And all validators also start calculating the solution based on the off-chain work in their off-chain worker thread. And when the result is ready, they submit it back. OK. And what happens? And eventually, as we reach the end of the era and we, we look at the, the window, we see, we look if we have received any solution. Uh, if we have, we use it. We say, okay, this is the new fragment. Um, if we don't, we fall back to the same on-chain fragment, which is very small, we're very slow, but it works. I mean, worst case scenario, block time doubles or triples. And um, 
Now, in, of course, if we receive multiple solutions, we evaluate them based on those three criteria, and we only take the best. Like we only accept a new, new solution if it's better. But I'm going to get to that in very great detail very soon. Yeah, so a solution, aside from be coming from, off, from, uh, from validators, can also be from any normal account, which gets verified in great detail. Um, there are two ways to submit a solution, signed and unsigned. That's the, the point at the end of the day. The signed one can be used by, by anyone. Like anyone can, any individual can submit it. But the, the detail that I wanted to point out is the unsigned one. You can also see it maybe in this function, which is called submit election solution unsigned. And this one has two extra parameters, an index of the validator and a signature which signs the whole, the rest of the payload. So the unsigned one must come from a validator. Um, that's the only thing that I wanted to point out. So you can only submit a solution uh, and get it into the system as an unsigned transaction if you are a validator. So yeah, unsigned must come from an authority and you must give your own index. Uh, the entire payload must be signed. Uh, staking now has a special key type for this, which should work like out of the box. As, as a operator, a node runner, a validator, you shouldn't worry about it. Um, yeah. and. This is the, the other variant of the same function. Uh, this one's called submit election solution. There's no unsigned on it. And as you see, it doesn't have those uh, signature and authority validator index, whatever, whatever it was. Uh, what it does is that the origin has to be signed. It needs to come from a normal account. So it's, it's literally like a balance transfer. OK, now I want to talk in great detail about uh, the format of the solution. And it's quite long. I want to see what's the time. OK, now we're doing OK-ish. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's very much detail. It's, it's a lot of detail. Um, so the first thing that I want to address is uh, let's look at this solution that gets submitted and look at the parameters. So you have origin, which is the, the sender of the, uh, yeah, the sender. You have a list of winners, which is a vector of a type that I call here a validator index. And uh, the reason for that is um, we, so this is like the first detail. It's, it's an index. And you might say, OK, what the hell? Where validators since when have index? And from this pull request onwards, they actually will have indexes. Um, at the moment, they are stored in, in maps in, in our storage, which, which is not indexed. It's like a key value storage. But, uh, and it's very hard to go through them and enumerate them. What we do from now on is when staking is locked at the beginning of that election window that I noticed, we dump the entire list of validators and nominators into a list. Um, and, and from now on, we use the index from this list. So if you want to submit a solution, you must look at these lists of, I would call them snapshots of, of validators and uh, use indexes to, to point to a validator or, or to generally to address anyone. You can't use an account ID anymore here. And uh, the reason is size efficiency, but I will, I will again get to that uh, soon. Okay. Um, so yeah, this, this might have some, some minor implications at some points. Um, for example, this validator index at the moment is U16, which means 16,000 roughly validators, which is probably going to be fine. Like, I don't know, like even if our, our wildest uh, assumptions or predictions of, for example, what they 10 years from now, Polkadot might look like. I think the number of validators would fit on that, but might have some implications on the size. Uh, the number of nominators at the moment is U32, like 32 bits, which is way more, like 4 billion. Um, 
Yeah, as I said, currently validator index is two bytes and nominator index is four bytes. So generally, when you submit a solution, um, you always use indexes from our snapshots, which are taken at the beginning of the election window. Um, oh yeah, and, and the point is that both of them are way smaller than a account ID. Like, and the, the main reason is that we want the solution that you submit to be very small. Um, okay, yeah, and I want to give an example of this. Let's imagine polka dot, which is I have horribly miswritten here. I'm sorry for that, is live. Uh, we have 1,000 validators, and each of them is backed by 200 nominators, and everything is perfect, right? What, what can go wrong? And let's imagine that you want to submit not the list of winners, but the, that sort of graph that I mentioned, like the, the edge weight of each nominator. You only want to submit that. And let's submit a naive solution. Um, let's say we have, uh, so we had like 200 nominators per validator, right? Like, like each validator is being fed by 200 nominators. So each validator has 200 incoming edges. So that gives us on total 200,000 edges multiplied by the address of the nominator, which is giving you this, this, this edge, um, the, the target of it, like the, 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 valid, the receiving end of it, and the weight of it. Uh, and let's assume that we use like the normal addresses, which are 32 bytes, and like I, or assume addresses are 32 bytes, uh, might, might be different, but let's, let's assume that. Uh, and as weights, you use like a U128, which is what I would say most chains would use as their balance type. And you do the multiplication and you get 15 megabytes of data. So sub submitting a fragment solution, I mean, this calculation might be wrong. Now, I, I just realized that you probably don't need this target anymore, but the, I mean, it would be like, I don't know, 10 megabytes. It's not that better. Yeah, the point is megabytes, not yeah, kilobytes. It's, it's mega, exactly. That, that doesn't make a big difference. Or let's say, no, you can't really say like, no, but my chain is like U64 in balance time. It's still going to be like, like pretty damn bad. And you can't have transactions of 15 megabytes floating around your system. Um, but now let's use the index, or let's have another example, which is slightly better, but again, just to see how bad it is. Because this example that I said was the worst case scenario, because the degree of edges is one, meaning that um, each nominator is voting for only one validator. Let's say it's eight. So, um, in that case, the total number of edges that you need to feed your 1,000 validators is going to be 25,000. You can see the relation yeah, when here. I, when I was looking at your slides before this, this was the one thing I didn't really get. Like, why? It seems to me like letting nominators vote, cast approval votes for more than one validator would make the solution bigger, not smaller. But that's. I make it. Oh yeah. It, I mean, from the, if you analyze it like this, it makes it smaller because now we're just assuming we have 1,000 validators and we have 200 nominations per each per validator. Like, um, yeah, I was just thinking about. Uh, I mean, obviously, you have a better solution than this with the indexing. I think it's definitely a, um, a good option. But uh, regarding the balance, you may not want to keep actually the full resolution of this U128. So the discussion yeah. is not even what is the, you know, the type of your balance. It may be, as you said, U64, doesn't matter. The problem remains. But what could be done is to downsample that. Because at the end of the day, an account that has three dots or an account that has seven dots doesn't really make a big difference. So you yeah. could actually pack them together and at least reduce a lot the, the granularity of, of the balance. Um, to save a couple of bytes or megabytes, maybe. Yeah, yeah, we 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 get to there. We we do that. We do it. I think more than even what you recommend. Like we downcast. Yeah, it was just an example. Yeah, you can be uh, much more aggressive than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not super aggressive, but it, it there is a quite a rounding, uh, rounding price in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. But that's a good point. Uh, we'll get to it. So if the degree is eight, if we want to feed that one thousand nominate validators with. Uh, with nominator degree eight, we get 25,000 edges. And in this case, you need, uh, 
I mean, I'm doubting if I did it. Yeah, okay, 25 nominate, 25,000 edges. Each of them have a nominator, which is like the, the, the left-hand side of the edge. Each of them point to eight targets and their weights. Now, this sounds correct, or it's at least it's naively correct. If you do the number again, it's around 10 megabytes. Horrible. And we can do better. What we do is, instead of weight, we use a type called per U16. It means that uh, um, you have like a rational number, which where your denom denom denominator is uh, 16,000, I don't know, 500 something, which is the maximum of U16. So your, as Will said, your resolution, your accuracy is actually a ratio of your ba balance dominated by, by U16. You can have, so if we had like, for example, U8 here, you only could have submitted, uh, your, your balance would only be like, I don't know, 100 out of uh, 255, like which is the max of, uh, of U8. So all in all, not, not getting into too much details, we use uh, ratios instead of absolute values for weights. We use something which is just two bytes, like U16 and we use indexes, and we use a, a fancy struct which even optimizes stuff a little bit more. It looks like this, it doesn't matter what it looks here, but I mean, it doesn't matter, like, I mean, we have to look at it, but it doesn't matter in detail, uh, but it has some properties that we can talk about. Um, first thing that you notice is uh, it has different fields for different number of votes that you give. Like if you vote for four people, you automatically get appended to this section of the struct. And the benefit of this is that we know the size from beforehand. So the, the size of your vote doesn't have to be encoded. For those of you who are uh, better with, uh, like are more into the programming details, you can see that we are using like a fixed size array, something here in between. Uh, yeah, just vaguely uh, trying to say that um, we use fixed size arrays at the expense of having an ugly struct, kind of. Uh, more importantly, I mean, this is like a very small detail. More importantly, if you vote for only one person, we don't even submit your weight ratio or balance or whatever, because it's 100%. If you vote for only one, I think someone, yeah, we also talked about this and someone mentioned it, that you can use it sort of as a trick to to not be dominated by fragment, you can always vote for one, one person. And in that case, we don't even encode your weight amount or whatever it is. So you can see that here we have like just a, a vector of tuples, which is like the voter, tar voter index and the target index, like a nominator index and validator index. And there is no weight. And even in the rest of them, we always ignore the last edge, the, the last weight. Because if I vote for, let's say, three validators, and it's like 30%, 40%, well, you, you can kind of infer that the last one is also 30%, because you, you subtract it from the maximum. So we do as much as we can to reduce the size of this thing. Yeah, so we drop the weights whenever it is possible. We um, we uh, yeah the length of our hard coded and instead of capital generic type capital V here we use two bytes and instead of T we use four bytes and the weights are U16 again two bytes much much smaller so let's do the same thing the same calculation with my compact type now two hundred thousand degree one which was the worst one two hundred thousand nominators or um yeah two hundred thousand edges each of them need one nominator index and one target index because if you remember correctly if you if if you remember from the previous slide the the when you vote for just one person you don't even have to encode the weight the yeah the way it's all, everything that you have at stake and it's about one megabyte so it's it's better and if you do it for a bigger size, I'm not going to go into detail, it's even a bit smaller. So this partially solves the, the situation of the size. Yeah, it's much better. Um, but it's not the end. It's barely okay, sort of, now. Um, 
Well, I mean, for Kusama, would, for Kusama size at the moment, it would be okay. But looking at it a bit futuristic for for Polkadot, it's uh, yeah, we will see. It looks like it's gonna be okay, but uh, if not, we have to move to like a, a challenge response system, uh, which hasn't been entirely spec. Yeah. Yes, by index, will I do not do not mean uh, account index. Um, so, um, okay. Index so, you, you, in the pre voting, you define the list of candidates' account, and the first one get index zero, and second one one, yes. and so on. And that's what you mean by index, not this kind of funny short version of the. No, no, no. Um, no. Oh, okay, okay, all good. Makes uh, sense. I think yeah. When we go to like at the end, I can I can briefly show it like there are two new storage items in staking they're called like snapshot nominators and snapshot validators and they are always none except when the window is open and when the window is open they are constant they will not change and we use these as indexes like, excellent thank you this is like a typical fragment. It's not the fragment solution. It's my horrible solution. But you remember the graph. Like I assigned everything equally because uh, I was naive. It's a bad solution, but it's technically a completely acceptable, legit fragment solution. It can be used. It's it's perfectly fine. And what I do is only replace the percentages with absolute numbers. And then we think, what else can I do to even reduce the size of this whole thing, uh, all of these edges and weights, uh, which is composed of a nominator, uh, edge weight, and a validator like these triplets, what else can I do to reduce their size? And it turns out, as long as there's a cycle in your graph, I mean, let's go here, a cycle in this graph, if you look at it as a graph, uh, you can always remove one edge. Uh, and this was what I meant by some people might like might not like it even more because we sort of play around with your votes even more. So the picture that you see here looks like a mess, but it's nothing but uh, the same graph as here. I only moved some items around. Uh, yeah, it's it's the same thing as here. I only moved stuff around so you can see it as like a sort of flat structure. And so this was this is completely irrelevant. This validator, validator one wasn't even a winner. This nominator four only voted for one person. It's not really building a cycle. But these guys, these uh, sort of five entities, these three nominators and these two do these two validators uh, or all three of them uh, make a cycle. And what we do to remove one edge from a cycle is we remove the minimum but we preserve the the cycle the sort of uh, supply and demand within the cycle let's look at it i think that's the easiest way to explain it so this seven and a half is the minimum uh, i choose i mean this can also be the minimum i like that i just choose this doesn't really matter i say this is now zero so how can i compensate this so this nominator stake is 15 and I remove seven and a half from here, I should add the rest to the next. And you might already see where I'm going with this. Then we continue. Okay, this nominator, th this validator now removed an extra seven and a half from here. So this needs to be removed, uh, subtracted by seven and a half. So we get two and a half. Then you follow this, you do like positive, negative, positive, negative. And what you end up with is a graph which has the same total stake for validators. So you see these numbers don't change. 17 and a half, 35, I mean, you can check them. I hope I have made at least this slide right. And you can check them while I'm talking. There should be no inconsistency in it. As you see, the stake of validators does not change, but we managed to remove one edge, which is quite good because it saves us some space. And um, yeah. This is also another trick that we are now applying. It's called reducing a solution. And um, okay, I oh, okay. This slide was is this is a, a wrong slide. I think Joshi warned me about it, but I forgot. Any questions about this or um, insights or anything? I'm gonna pause again also to catch your breath.
No, all good. Is that, is that something that is in action today? Is is that the reason why we see sometimes some inactive um, nominations? No, 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 no. That's that's. It's not still in action. Uh, it will soon be, but yeah. No, that that's the, the reason for that is another concern that I have. It's not really related to this seminar, but we have like a. It's it's not the reason. The reason it has something to do with slashing and how we react to slashes and like sometimes we skip some nominations because they were previously slashed i think i don't know because i that's not something that oh I've yeah on. yeah okay i see what you mean yeah okay but it's related to slashing and yeah, yeah, that's, yeah okay. a big, that's exactly the reason why my offline fragment tool at the moment is invalid because i don't do that and because mm -hmm. Kusama is doing that, like it's filtering that, applying that filter, but I haven't yet. And yeah, but no, that's something else. This is just a trick to remove some edges. But the slide is crap. Um, so yeah, we remove more edges uh, without any change to the, the backing stake uh, or a nominator's total stake also never changes, but the amount of money, of course, changes. Like if you vote for two people, maybe we remove one of them and we only give all your stake to one guy. Uh, the properties of the staking system or the staking system or the network in general don't change at all. Um, but yes, yeah, some details of edges, they do. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, so this brings us to maybe the last thing about uh, submitting a solution, which is uh, the score of the solution. The last thing. So we, we already talked about winners and the only details was that it needs to be indexed. This thing, which is called compact assignment is everything that I just explained, it's that ugly struct which has votes one, votes two, all the way to 16, and well, it optionally can be reduced, etc. And finally, we have something called score, which is nothing more than those three parameters that I named. It's an array of size three, three numbers, and we compare the solutions based on this score. And, ah, okay, so what's the detail? Um, a solution, tells us the score. It sort of claims, hey, here's my solution, because the solution is composed of only these two items, winners and compact assignment. But it also gives us a score and sort of claims, hey, this is my score. And um, which is an array of those three parameters I named. Yeah, sounds familiar. And what we're doing here is something which I'm not sure if it's a term, I call it like a lazy verification, uh, where we ask the user to give us as much detail as possible so we can reject based off of it. But when we want to actually take that detail into account, we double check it. The point is we know that some anyone can lie and just tell they have a good score when they don't. And um, yeah, we, we, for example, I can, let's see what's the next slide. Um, yeah, so I can actually talk about this aside from the slides. Uh, a simple example is, let's assume a lot of the entities in the network who are submitting solutions are honest. Let's only take that into account. This allows us to reject honest solutions as soon as possible. Because if I'm an honest person and I'm submitting a solution which is crap, then you can very easily reject it as the chain. Um, if I am malicious and then my score is later on checked. So this, this sort of allows us to reject uh, as much as possible, which brings me to this sentence, which I have named the objective of the verification, reject as many solutions as early as possible with the least amount of work. Because before it used to be that running fragment was the bottleneck and it was a very heavy thing to do. Now it's verifying it because it's a lot to verify. We just talked about that even a compact solution is 800 kilobytes of data, for example, on a normal network or megabytes sometimes, and you need to at least iterate them a couple of times. And that's already like, it gives you an indication of how time critical it is. And we have, um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how much of 
it might be an interesting discussion. I'm going to start with it, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, we have a number of errors that can be raised from your fragment solution when you submit it. Uh, and I thought the easiest way to go to talk about verification is just to go through all of these errors. Um, the first wrong thing that you can do is be early or late, or depending on how you look at it, like when the election window is closed, immediately reject it. If the election window is open, then we look at then we look at your score, the score that you claimed you have, which might be wrong. But if what you claimed is already less, then we reject you immediately. I mean, the only case where this can be harmful is if you are a honest submitter and you miscalculated your score. But that's really your fault. I mean, that you can't really blame. Yeah, you can't really blame the chain for doing this. Um, so yeah, this is the second one, weak, weak submission. Your, frag your solution is weak, it's not good enough. Third one is snapshot unavailable. This is not gonna happen hopefully anytime soon. Snapshots fail to, snapshot was that big list of validators and nominators that we put in storage to use as indexes. And then we lock the staking. And if the size of the snapshot is within the bounds, like if we have more than 16,000 validators, for example, then the snapshot is not created. And then we also get this error, but this is not going to happen. And it's not really about malicious users. Um, next thing that you can do is give us the a wrong number of winners, uh, bogus winner counts, like, because the chain has one parameter named um, validator counts, and we, we want that many number of validators. And if you give us more, we reject it. If you give us less, we reject it. The only case is if we have less candidates, which is most likely never going to happen in any live chain. Like, let's say you want 10 validators, and, but you have only seven candidates. In that case, seven is acceptable. But I mean, yeah, any live chain wouldn't encounter this. Um, then a winner can be, um, yeah, a winner can be wrong. Like, um, so you submit the winners as a list of indices. And if one of those indices is out of bound, it, it's beyond the bound of number of validator candidates that we have, then that's invalid. And this would be a bogus winner. Then your compact solution type might also be wrong. Uh, you might say how, for example, um, you submit weights as ratios. And let's say I claim for myself that I am a nominator and I voted for A and B and I gave them 70% and 80% of my stake. I'm kind of like overstaking myself. This is one example of how your compact type might be invalid, which raises this error. Like, bogus compact. And of course, in your compact, you also, in your compact uh, solution, you also have lots of indices again. And if any of them is invalid, you again just get this error. Um, now this one's deprecated. I'm not going to go through it. I'm, I have to just remove it before the pull request is merged. Um, then you might have a bogus nomination. Like, for example, um, I say I have uh, my, I say again, my stake has been distributed between A, B, and C, while on chain, I haven't even nominated for C. So again, this is, this is what raises this error. So your nominations must actually match whatever you have done on chain, like all nominations must do. A self vote can be corrupt as well. Maybe I should have renamed it differently because self no votes are only for validators. So if someone votes for themselves, we assume it's a validator voting for themselves. So it must have 100% stake. It must go to themselves. And yeah, so if, if it doesn't meet, like if there is like a validator voting for a single nominator, that's crap. That's completely invalid. It can't happen. Um, then there might be a... Um, uh, what I would call a bogus edge. Um, so you're, again, I might, I might claim that I have, my stake has been distributed between A, B, and C, but C is not even a winner. And that's, again, a mistake. That's wrong. We reject it. 
And finally, because I mean, I don't want to get into the details, but computing the score is the one of the heaviest things that you have to do computation wise. Uh, finally, if all of this oh, and these errors, I have ordered them in the list in the in the order that they are checked. So if all of this is correct, then we check your score and see if it's actually the score that you claimed. Oof. And that's how we verify a fragment solution. Um, yeah. Anyone, if now is a good time to ask a question if you want to. Um, if not, I would proceed. I decided to raise my hand, but I, I don't know if you see it. I have two comments actually on this list. Yes. Um, the first one is you say that one case pretty much up the list is not possible where the amount of um, validators or candidates that doesn't match the validator, validator count. And you yeah. said this is not possible. Actually, I think it's a risky assumption because we've seen that happen actually every time there is an issue. And if you consider that issue cannot happen, um, we may end up with uh, with cases that we that are hard to solve. It, it can actually happen that we want to have 100 validators, but we only have 10. And one of the reason is corrupted clients or something that, you know, like a big screw up. And that happened. We saw it like the last time um, we had an issue on finality, I think. Um, okay. Every time we recover, we start again with, you know, like way less validators than what we wish we would have. Mm. Okay. Well, that's something that I should probably consult. And it's 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 not, no one wants to have it. It's not yeah. a good scenario. We don't want that. But but it happens. And actually, when it happens, actually, um, we may want to be very dynamic and and try to evolve from that because that means something really went wrong. And right now, the chain is carried by a very small subset of validators doing their best to keep it live. So as soon as we can get out of that and get more validators on board, um, it's good. So what I'm saying is any fragment validation that supports um, at least an increasing amount of validators, as long as it's under the count, would be good. Um, that would be an improvement. Yeah, we, what we can do is we can remove this check. and um, But then that would be like the entry bar, you know, like... So if, yeah. if we already have the maximum, then that's it. That's we're good. Yeah. If it's yeah. not, that would be the entry bar. That's and that's yeah. a very good recommendation. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would keep that in mind then. Maybe yeah. we implement it actually. I'm not sure which one is the best because I'm not exactly sure what we what process we go through when we have these crazy stalls, for example. Mm. But might be the case. Thank you. Yeah. And you had another the second, one. second comment was about um, this snapshot and available, uh, the third one. Um, and, and my concern here is related to the question I asked at the beginning. So your answer was today we don't have the problem because today all the fragment work is done in the last block of the era. Mm -hmm. So basically it's all atomic. We don't need to freeze anything. So here it's a bit different. Here there is a point of time where we say, now we freeze everything. We consider that's the input data, give that to all people who want to calculate their fragment solution offline. But, but what about this snapshot becoming dirty? What if something, you know, in the meantime changes a lot, uh, such as, a, I don't know, 10 of the major validators just going offline because Azure just got a bug. Mm. That, that makes actually your whole snapshot and all the energy, I mean, CPU energy that people are spending calculating the thing completely void because um, this snapshot is dirty, it's no longer valid. So whatever well, solution they send back would be a bad one. If, if some nodes go offline, would that necessarily tamper the data or? Um, let, let me elaborate a little bit more. If, if, if something has gone so wrong that an unchained data, I mean, this is a snapshot, we can, same could be applied to my balance, for example, an unchained data can be sort of tampered. I think, we have like sort of bigger problems now to like something is horribly wrong and it might be yeah, okay. That would be a big thing. That would yeah. be a big thing, definitely. But I think, I mean, validators getting slashed could be a reason or suddenly you get, you know, like half of the validators get corrupt for whatever reason, malicious or a bug. So they start getting slashed um, during this time where uh, or after the snapshot has been sent. Sorry, what? So 
you have a properly running network, you yeah. send a snapshot or you make a snapshot. And after that time, before the next era, something really bad goes wrong. Like something goes wrong. Like many people get slashed yeah. for whatever reason. Um, yeah. Um, I'm still not sure if that would affect like, because this snapshot becomes unavailable. Like once we make it, it's available unless if, so you're not really talking about the case where it's unavailable because we failed to create it because we might fail to create no, it no. because we, we have one so so yeah. we have a network we have a hundred validators at one point we make a snapshot snapshot is all valid all good we send it to everyone yeah. this they start crunching data computing super good solutions and in the meantime something goes really wrong um, yeah. basically the the underlying data is changing so the landscape the, the snapshot we sent is no longer reality Okay. So by the, the time the solutions no longer like apply very well to right, like, right, state, right. What you're saying, right? So right, right. you'll get solutions that are kind of not like example. To the it, situation. Derek is speaking, so I take him as an example. He is in the validator set and he is like the big validator of the set. It is part of the, the snapshot. And I find a super cool solution where I say, hey, you know, full on Derek. Like, that's my solution, and it's a valid one, it's running. Um, but by the time we would be able to apply the solution. Derek is no longer there. He's been slashed. He's gone. Uh, I mean, the assumption is that the snapshot like represents the the state of the chain at the end of the era somewhat. So, in a way, maybe there. I mean, if there is some cheap way to kind of do some sort of high level, is the snapshot still still does it still kind of like represent the state of the chain? Although I guess at that point you can't recalculate anyway, though, right? So I mean, you might be better off with just whatever you can, whatever you can up with, right? Or, so. or maybe the question is, if the snapshot gets dirty uh, between yeah. the time where we send it and the time we apply it, is it really something critical? That that's what like I, I'm, I mean, if if validators start getting slashed, okay, that's that's a different problem which I should, um, which I'm writing down to address later on. Uh, Slash because we don't have the problem today. Today we don't have the issue because it's atomic. It's all done in one block. But we're talking about size issues, which means the amount, the number of blocks required to do this computation checks and everything will will increase. So yeah. I don't know. It's going to be ten blocks, hundred blocks, thousand blocks. I don't know. But during that time, uh, many things can happen actually, and and things will happen. Well, one thing would just be like, are all the people that are proposed to be in the next set are they? Like even running, basically, I guess. I mean, that might be something to. So in in such yeah, cases, right. um, in such cases, the idea is that yeah, the, the solution might become invalid. We do our best by locking, but the easiest case, which which we we also talked about now, is if someone gets slashed in the during the window, they are unbounded, right? Or or they're not. But let's say someone. Someone just goes offline in this in the meantime, like, or there is a way for someone to sort of like just ditch out. There are two ideas about it being prevented. A is that someone or a autonomous script maybe is constantly checking this stuff, and if there is a problem, it submits a new solution. And if if for example this if at the end of the if will scenario happen and we get like a horrible, I don't know, consensus problem and this data is completely, it's, it's becoming like dirty and all solutions are rejected, we just fall back to on-chain data. And the on-chain data is, it's, it's like, yeah, we, that's what we use even nowadays. And then it would be atomic and we don't have this problem anymore. Oh, okay. Okay, so there would be a fallback. Um, yeah, yeah, there is a fallback. I mean, the hmm. fallback it should be prevented very much because it's very, very hard to compute. But yeah, there is a fallback. But it's still hmm. something that I would talk to people about. Hmm. It's not my area of expertise exactly. Yeah. Like, I think the most important is to have a plan B because these things will happen. Um, most of the time, probably that won't be an issue. Uh, the example yeah. where I said Derek is no longer there, maybe we don't care. No offense, Derek, it's just an example. <laughs> I see your face. <laughs> uh, but it may not be a big issue. If we lose a validator, it's no big deal. 
Um, the fact that validators go off offline may not even be an issue because I think it takes a while to notice it. So we may not even notice it during the time we are um, calculating the offline fragment. Yeah. I'm more thinking about validators obviously getting completely rogue. So they will be slashed. Okay. They will pay for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but we definitely don't want to have them part of the new solution knowing that they are rogue. Okay, uh, a question, and Will, I guess you, you probably know this as an active member of the current Kusama. What, what's the behavior when someone gets slashed now? Do they also get unnominated or not? Oh, uh, I, I don't know anymore. They, they, they were unnominated is, well, I think the issue in the past because you had this sticky thing, you know, like as soon as a validator would get slashed, uh, they would lose their nomination. And, and, and nomination would pretty much never come back, actually. But the validator so, itself will not get... Ah, okay, okay, okay. Well, actually, I know how this should be solved. So the, 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 um, the piece of code which I talked about, which is filtering these nominations, uh, and if you have been recently slashed, then we take that into account and remove your nominations, that would be an extra check which should be added here. And I guess you won't, yeah, mm. that, that should be added here. Like, because that's what the on-chain data would do. I mean, I, yeah, but I'm not sure. I, I should talk to someone who's like an expert no. in this field. I, I think that the, the, yeah. the summary you probably want to check here is if, the state of the network is changing a lot. So if the snapshot becomes really dirty, and now the <laughs> definition of really <laughs> dirty needs to be done, <laughs> is it, how much is applying this solution to this dirty yeah. snapshot will completely change everything. And if the answer is a lot, then probably we don't want to move and better, better stick with what we have than do something crazy. Yeah. I mean, the ideal scenario is that the snapshot should not become dirty. Like, should not that, state, that the network will have slashes and people going offline, but the ideal scenario is that we take it into account when we accept the solution. But that's not ideal. That's because, I mean, you might accept a solution 100 blocks before the end of the era, and yep. at that block, everything is fine, but then five blocks after, one of the winners does something bad. Yeah, sure, that's, that's a problem. And yeah, thanks for raising it. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure how it should be solved eventually. Maybe we just start with this. I'm going to talk about rolling this out, which I think is the last part, actually. Um, yeah, so um, this is actually the final slide, so I'm going to go through it, then uh, we can, uh, okay, no. Yeah. Um, so this is like, all just the beginning and there would be definitely lots of more fixes it might yeah break at some point um, and we have some ideas of uh, of uh, what we want to do next one is for example um, validators who all submit a fragment solution by their off-chain worker should that should be like sort of randomized because otherwise all of them is going all of them are going to submit the same thing and even though we reject them in the first step, um, still, if we randomize it a bit, then it's kind of nicer, you know, like someone submits a solution now, you submit it five blocks from now, someone else submits it seven blocks from now, it's, uh, it's uh, slightly nicer. So this randomizing is one of the ideas. Uh, we can reward and slash based on, I mean, by slash, I don't mean the slash and staking, reward and punish the solutions that you submit, if you give us a really good solution, I don't know, maybe we refund your transaction fee, for example. If you give us a very bad solution and waste a lot of computation time, we might charge you a little bit more. These are ideas that we have to see how it works out. Currently, it's the most expensive transaction in Substrate Runtime, and consequently Kusama, submitting a solution. Um, we can enforce the reduce, like everyone has to reduce, because if we enforce it, then the number of edges is becomes very small. It like it or becomes much smaller. Because if if M is the number of elected validators, like 160 in Kusama now, and N is the number of Kusama, which I think we have like 600 now at the moment, then the number of edges is this is the bound on it. If if this reduce that I explained is enforced. 
We might enforce it, we haven't done it yet. And rounding is also another rough concern. Um, I mean, now we round up to U16 in terms of accuracy of ratios of your balance. Um, but there's still like a little bit of work to be done or maybe sort of observe and then fix later on uh, regarding how we do rounding. At the moment, we round everything down, if I recall correctly. So you always lose a bit of money. Not that you lose it. You, you're bound like 10 KSM. But your stake, which is distributed, is actually like 9.99 KSM. Or even like the difference should be even less. Uh, it's a very small concern, but it's yeah, something to keep in mind. Um, some miscellaneous stuff. Now this I don't want to talk about. Um, Multi-phase rollout. So this, this whole thing that I explained hasn't been even mer merged into substrate. When it does, uh, it will have a configuration in which the length of the election window is zero. And what the, con the, the ramification of that is that there is no time to submit a solution, no snapshots will be taken, and we always fall back. So we do exactly same, the same as we're doing now in Kusama. And then at some point we start, we, yeah, we increase it. Maybe we, I mean, yeah, I think this is safer, but maybe we, maybe we end up not doing that. But I see that's the current plan, at least, to do it in a multi-phase. So then we set it to like a, I think, a relatively large window. And then we reduce the window a few times so that it's sort of efficient. Because we're still locking staking and we don't want to lock for no reason. And that's it. Um, yes, very much on time. Uh, I mean, we had like a mini demo as well, I think. But um, yeah, we're kind of over time, but there's definitely time to talk or if there are questions, we can talk about that. No, just thanks for the presentation. I'd say we, you know, we, we use this tool you know, as a validator. It's quite, uh, it's quite useful if you're, for example, if you're in the waiting and like not in the active set, the question is often like, well, how much, how much nomination do I need to get to get in the active set? So this tool has proved useful to us to answer those kinds yeah, of questions. Yeah, I, I will try at some point points hopefully soon within the next I don't know few weeks to months to really improve it give it at least another round of features um, uh, to be able to answer these questions but it's generally a bit uh, confusing and I would say misunderstood because you, you saw how fragment is working and now that we're doing it I mean, you still haven't seen how Fragment chooses those three validators, for example, in the dummy example that I had. But you have kind of seen that it's the objective that it has is not to select the richest, richest, richest ones in order. It's to um, optimize a few parameters. And sometimes answering the question of what's the entry barrier is kind of tricky because it depends mm -hmm. really on the solution and the situation. Maybe, yeah, I mean, it, it really depends. And um, we'll see, but I, <clears throat> I, I hope the tool will be like sort of helpful at eventually to that, to validators. Yeah. And I hope more, pe more people will eventually also work on it because it can be like, it can be expanded quite a lot. Um, can you maybe, say a little yeah. word about how you are testing. So you explained already that you can now hook up um, this offline fragment to a running blockchain to kind of get some input data. But how are you actually testing all these scenarios? How are you making sure that mm -hmm. um, that these features are not potentially, you know, having a niche case that would break everything? Yeah, you mean the off-chain fragment? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off-chain, that's the reason that I want to roll it out in phases is, or I don't want to roll it out into Kusama yet, even if the pull request is merged, is exactly because it hasn't been merged. Uh, it hasn't been tested that, that well. I've tested on like, a, I don't know, four nodes with four validator local test net, but it hasn't been tested on, on scale. And I'm afraid there's not an easy way to do it either. Because mm -hmm. like, I will, like, uh, yeah. What I will do, I mean, I did it once, but then lots of things change. I have to do it again, is I will run like the, the code that generates the solution with my offline fragment tool, because that one has access to it. And just look at the solution for Kusama. And 
hope or let's hope that I, if there is something wrong with it, I can under identify it by just looking at it. But other than that, there's really no, there's also not that good of a way to test it as far as I know, because it's not something that you can test individually. I mean, you yeah, can run yeah. a you could run a different node which still syncs but you do your own thing but yeah it's not going to get you that far yeah so okay. yeah you can only test what you expect actually which is the problem here what what can happen what can go wrong yeah it's uh that's mainly also the reason why i'm trying to be like very cautious and mm -hmm. it also has taken a while you know like to to get this ready and prepared to i really i mean at no, it's it's software. It's gonna break, <laughs> and uh, it's ironic. Most often, the more you try for it to not break, the the more likely it is. But uh, I've I've tried to make it like um, the fallback at least, sort of always there. So if anything goes wrong, you just do the fallback, and that should that should save us either way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but super nice presentation. Thank you very much for all the explanation. That was very interesting. Oh, my my pleasure. It's been a while, and um, like uh, it's been almost a year that this fragment has been going on in in Polkadot in general, and I think it deserved more attention. I'll I'll try to like prepare the same deck and maybe present it in different I don't know meetups, conferences as well. Yeah, thank you for your feedback, everyone. And um, stupid stupid thing actually, would that be much of a would that be interesting to actually make some kind of um. How can I call that? Um, Fragment-only experiment. Like, could you pack together a little tool that people could run that would kind of simulate that without having to run that on Kusama, where we can put some crazy values and try to do crazy stuff to really test it live without being on chain? Yeah, more. I mean, you can do that, do that more or less even now. Depends on how easy it is to do. Uh, fragment code now is in substrate, but I want to extract it actually, put it into its own GitHub repo and with different tests and stuff. But at the moment, it's in substrate and it has a pretty large test suite. And you can add mm -hmm. a new test if you want. And in tests, everything is rather simple, like all account IDs are numbers and mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, I mean, if, if you end up doing that, you can send me a message about it if you encounter problems. It should be do. I mean, if you just want to do some test numbers, you can do it easily with the tests. No, I was right. more, more thinking about trying to reproduce, actually. Um, I, I don't know if it adds value, actually, you know, compared to having it running on Kusama and increasing this window, as you mentioned, or if it would make sense to actually have a way for people to run it, actually, offline. I mean, offline. Offline, but connected. But I can I can pick you on, on Riot about that. I think it's probably better to discuss offline. Um, okay, yeah. Um, but I think the the combination like that offline fragment repo, which I think we have now, the link to Joshi. I think put the link in the chat. Uh, I can yeah. I I will move this somewhere to Parity and Parity repo, so it will be more visible. Um, I think we did, I mean, this has access to fragments algorithm, so you can do anything you want. You also have optional access to Kusama, so you can mix and merge both of them. I think that should be enough for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so, um, yeah, if, if there are any further questions, you can reach out to me. And thanks for listening. Have a, have a good day, everyone. Or good night, depending on where you are, I guess. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.